The front row, the Grazini riders, Jeremy Alvaro, after a big crash this morning in the warm-up, he starts from eighth, headed to Pasquier. Antonelli Toba and Artigas go from the fourth. Aki and Carlos Tatai are on row six. Sasaki, of course, crashed out of podium places on the last lap last weekend. Cooney Cothra and Isdihar Neta, Foggia, Rossi and Onju. So quite an unusual way to kick off this Qatar Grand Prix. Plus what the rider has to do to win the race out in that win tonight. Yeah, Moto3 with the wind is always a step stronger compared to all the rest. But also I saw Migno this weekend very, very fast and the eye is very strong. Thank you and best of luck in your race this evening. Yeah, thanks very much to uh, Marco Bedzecki. He has been strong this weekend. He did top Q1 and then put up a strong fight for the front row as well last night. Some interesting Dunlop top in the field that have gone for the soft Dunlop rear tyre. Now, not a great surprise from Fanati. He does tend to do that on a regular basis. In this 18-lap race, it's 23-degree air temperature as we're ready to get going here. And 28 on track. The opening night belonging to KTM, and in particular, the Red Bull KTM IO team. The 1-2 for Massimo and Acosta. The first for KTM. Repeat of that, although Acosta, with a lot of work to do from a pit lane start, although Sergio Garcia has had great pace all week. Often does in Moto3. Do not discount the likes of Garcia. Fanati and Foggia have also had pretty good race paces. And Garcia and a couple of others have clubbed together and said we need to work together once pit yeah. lane opens. I think Garcia, he went to Foggia. Just hope that they make a safe exit out of pit lane. That's the most important thing. Once the last bike goes past them. To get underway, lights out. Good start from Rodrigo. Good start from Massia on pole as well. Suzuki, number 24, is coming through. I've been there as well. Here are the uh, Magnificent Seven then charging from the pit lane start, led by Sergio Garcia at the moment already. Yet yeah, Suzuki in third place. Good start uh, from him as well. Mino's still up inside. That's time to get temperature in that soft rear tyre. This is aggressive and hard charging from Binder already. There's no way back for Rodrigo at Turkley. Uh, yeah, they have a lot of work to do. And, uh, you know, well, that's the, pen the price yeah. you have to pay for the penalty. They need this to be a big car lane. These are the 21 riders that started on the grid. There is Jam and Massia. Not the greatest of starts from the world. Bike was weaving, wasn't it, on the run down to that first corner. He's the heaviest and tallest guy, as Steve said. So, not traditionally going to get the best launches off the line. Tabs on that one as Binder still leads. Number 40. There's a move from number 16, Mino, up the inside of Tatsuki Suzuki. And Garth getting towards the end of this first lap and across the line. It will be Darren Binder who will lead, but it's now time to get into slipshot. Four riders last week. Yeah, at some stage in the race, he's going to have to do that double long lap penalty, Artigas. That's Kaito Toba. What a slip. Really, really good job from Kaito Toba. It's a Japanese 1 2 here in Moto 3. Here are the seven riders then. Yeah, now the last thing those guys, Tsuki Suzuki. Binder retaliates quickly on Toba through turn four. Nicely done. Yeah, it looks like Anju got to the front. Of penalty, penalty, isn't it? Yeah. Blimey. He's got to do two of those after his indiscretion. Right there in the race, last weekend when he took out Mino. This one then from Tatsuki Suzuki, then Darren Binder, Rodrigo is in fourth, and then it's Mino, Antonelli and Massi, and now he's dropped to ten. John McPhee has still got to get his gloves off, he's 11th at the moment, but one place ahead of Ayumi Sasaki now, remember Sasaki's excited coming into this Grand Prix, Sasaki, again they're quite confident, with a good start and an aggressive first couple laps, he could get himself into There is Darren Binder, trying to find a way through on Tatsuki Suzuki. Again, he moves up into second place. Nice move. We hope the slip stream in Kaito Toba on this lap. The Japanese man's got a good, what, 10 to a dozen bike lengths, although here comes that little bit late on the brakes. We know that Binder is the latest breaker in this Moto3 field, and well, that strength really... Asia, though, just goes straight into the side of one of the sniper's bikes. It was Mino contacting up a little bit. The guys who started from pit lane through the last split were 7.9 seconds down. They need to try and... One. Oof, that was the reason why John McPhee lost a bit of ground. Well, he went down there at turn six. P17 after that. So, Binder it is that leads from Kaito Toba. There's the 20th place. He's had a real strong start to this uh, Doha Grand Prix on lap three in P3. Oh. Toba then, the door was open there from Darren Binder and through he goes on his CIP Green Power KTM number. They've already rubbed once on this lap, so that was nicely done into the final corner on the brakes, just pinching the inside line. In the braking zone for the first corner, yes he is, but look at Salach as well, look at the six stream he got too, he's going to lead into turn one. Further back there is Andy Izdaha. Lorenzo Fallon, this is much better from the French rider that runs behind Izdihar, 9.8.
off your race leader. So there's still an awful lot of work to do for those seven. Again, look at these guys through turn six. Chopping, changing elbows, exceeding track limits as well. And that was just penalties. Board with the South African Darren Binder looking up ahead to Argentina's Gabriel Rodrigo. He is much like Alcoba, one of the heavier and taller riders yeah. in this Moto3 class. This has got to be the first time that we've seen for through to 13th place, but his Grand Prix career not littered with too many top 10s. 34 appearances, just four top in from the number 12. He leads from uh, Tatsuki Suzuki, Rodrigo, Darren Binder thinking about a move. He's just waiting a while for it. He's waiting 35 Grand Prix. He's made me wait for that one. This is what happens to Slipstream on the start finish straight. One kilometre long on board. <laughs> turn one. Incredible action from Moto3 yet again in the braking zone for that first corner. Yeah, that's excellent work oh, from the lovely. number 31 there. He, and he got Antonelli there through turn three. That was brave and bold. He made, but he's now uh, in this group and in the pack hunting for a podium. It's Moto3 field ahead of Massia, who slowly but surely, Matt, is finding his way to the front. Yeah, as Marco Batsecki said, pre-run that KTM machine. Of course, he did ride a KTM a couple of years ago, then switched to the Leopard Honda. His championship challenge didn't really materialise. From pit lane, the gap's now come down to 5.38. That's largely down to the fact that they've allowed Pedro to the race sort of the front of this group. Oh, so that was so, so <laughs> close between Philip Salac and Darren Binder. How there wasn't contact. So there are the lead four, the quartet that have broken away from that group of seven pit lane starters. Gosh, these guys. Now hammering it down the start, finish straight, cutting off the nose of Gabriel Rodrigo was Andre. Stefano Nepper's just fired in yet another best lap of the race, a 206, 232. So it's going round the outside. That's brilliant from the world championship leader. He moves back up into fourth place. Yeah, that's the cop. Seeing them is one thing, getting on to the back of them is a completely different story behind him and Garcia number 11. The pace certainly picked up at the front on that last lap. The top eight men all did their personal best lap. front of this one, the rookie. Then it's Tatsuki Suzuki. Behind Suzuki is Antonelli and then Sasaki. Well, we got accustomed to seeing so many brothers in arms in Grand Prix racing at the moment. <laughs> Phillips, suddenly not an easy man to overtake. Salach and Mino can't find a way through. Oh, oh that was tight. Very Torrigo. Really cold snipers, 1-2 at the moment. Salach leads Mino. I don't think that's going to be lasting for too much longer. With Fantastic racing as ever in Moto3. Oh, Someone's that, really wide. Oh, look, what about the tight run that Toba could carry? The tight line that Toba the first couple of corners. He's back oh. in second. Brilliant move there from Madrian Fernandez. Up the inside of Darren Binder. We can't all, all going on here in Moto3 and there's still lots of life left in it. 12 laps to go. Andrea Mino it is that leads. Yeah. And this is just the now. It's only 6.8 seconds away uh, from what was the race leader, Philip Salach. This is a replay then of them. Head His front brake protector came off and he was nearly over the bars there. His front brake caught Darren Binder. Those two had it was so close to going over the bars there. The gap now down to one and a half seconds. Acosta is almost in touch. 27, the race winner here from a few years ago. Race winner from Sunday in third, Jaume Masia. There is Koffler, number 73, with them. Fanati now leads that group ahead of Pedro Acosta. Yeah, team boss Peter Ertl of the Max Race. Is he going to burn up that soft rear tyre which he chose? Binder and McPhee also chose that front tyre. Toba, there's no way through on Meanwell, who's just moved into the top six momentarily from 17th on the grid. On board now then with Jaume Massia. Six, but don't discount the Scotsman. Yeah, John McPhee not really making any significant soft tyre, Steve. Exactly, yeah, exactly my thinking. All really wide there from Philip Salach. You don't want to do that too many times. So, Andre Mino, with just the one race win to his name, that epic day a few years ago, Fallon, and Pedro Acosta, who was second here seven days ago. Somewhat wide, shall we say. Yeah, we don't need the uh, curb sensor to pick that one out, exceeding the track limits. Back at the... There's Binder, of course, as well, who's also going to be wary about exerting that soft rear tyre too much at this stage. It's a long, long way from Binder. These guys go across the line. Jam and Massey are trying to retake the lead of this race. Mino it is across the line who will lead and they're kicking off. Kaita Toba, Salach. He picks up Rodrigo in the first corner. No mercy there from the Czech man. Ahead of John McPhee. Oh, a front end moment there for Ethan Guevara. He won't want another fall. Yeah, a bit twitchy. He was down heavy this morning. At
into turn five. Yes, he was starting from pit line, but it's been a, another disappointing day. But Masia just going onto the Astro turf there, kicking up all of the dust, looking over to his. Uh, he absolutely pinned, though, of didn't he? Of course he did. <laughs> of course he did. Ten laps remain. Up into the lead. There was a move there. That looked like Jaume Masia, was it? Just making up another place. It's not going to be a way through for Salach into turn 15. The concertina up now. It's going to be all about the slipstream yet again. Keeps finding those very, very tiny gaps into turn 16, doesn't he? Chama Masia. He looked right over there. Oh. Here, alarming regularity. Look at that. Eight, nine abreast in the breaking zone for the first corner. Scary shoulder on the exit of turn 16. Really has cost him. Nine laps remain. Got big, sharp elbows, he hasn't has, it? Yeah. The biggest of them all in this class. Good move at the front from Salach again. Turn six from John McPhee. Wasn't able to find a way through. Acosta, 5.5 seconds behind your race leader. Those three have been quite smart, actually. They've not decided to make any kind of move on Acosta. He's got the speed to drag them back into enough time for them to get some big points. Philip Salach, number 12, never had a Grand Prix podium in third place, never had a race win in Moto3. Further back there is Koffler, there is Acosta, Fanati at the front. They can just run their pace, run their rhythm. It will change completely when they do get in this group. That's when it's going to get a little bit harder. will be eight laps to go across the line. Tobe has not been great at defending position in that final corner. Oh, oh right, wow. yeah, that getting squeezed? Oh, it was the two Petronas spit the racing boys that looked like they had close contact. It was oh. Binder that got hung out to dry. Oh, that wide. John McPhee had the inside line. There was no way that Binder could turn in. That's super tight as well, isn't it, between... It's of the action here. This is a Royal Rumble. There's no team orders going on anywhere. Here comes Alcoba up the inside of Sasaki. Led across the line. Now watch his teammate as well. There's hardly any room for anyone. This race needs to be put that. Oh, dearie me. There was Binder going out towards the white paint on the outside. That's what cost him a bunch of places through turn two. Alcoba it is that leads. Yeah, and there's Acosta now about to jump all over the rear tyre of Max ahead of them. It's now down to 4.3 seconds. Acosta off the lead. The entire points finishes at the moment. The top 50. The final corner, he collected himself, thankfully. On to the start, finish straight once more. Yeah, Seven laps to go. And who knows what. Yeah. What's that, ten bikes abreast this heading into turn one? This is crazy. This is watching through your fingers, isn't it, this one? If it's at all possible, they're closer into turn one there than they were on the opening lap. Oh, was that Acosta on the... Uh, here, and to play in the league group. Garcia just said his fastest lap of the race. The fastest lap of the race, the 206.187. That it's too many times. Garcia, they're lunging. Oh, it's oh contact. First faller of the day we have, and it's Artigas. Oh, well, last racing and all the contact without somebody biting the dust. Well, I'm surprised that we got this far, to be honest. 12 laps it's taken before the top eight, the Swiss rider. It was in that turn six as well where Garcia ran a really tight, yeah. aggressive line. He picked up his teammate, Guevara. Here, Artigas. Tigas cannot get that bike going again. It is the race over. Leopard Honda have had a shocking couple of weeks here, isn't it? Or is it Antonelli? No, it's Tatai. Tatai? What's he got against Leopard Honda this year? It was him that wiped out Foggia on La penalty coming in right. uh, Portimao. Tatai, the enemy of Leopard, that's for sure at the Let's moment. try and recap. At the end of his back in the top five again. Where do you try and watch? There's so many battles raging through this. Oh. Salach is down. Salach, after what was looking like being his best ever evening of Moto3 oh, racing, he's gone out of the... 20 in this. It's so, so hard to call. Jaume Masia up the inside there of John McPhee. Well, actually, he was having one of the best rides of his World Championship career, wasn't he? He was trying to go around the outside of the Yumi with that. Sasaki didn't deviate from his line at all. I think that's just a pure racing incident, nothing that Sasaki could do. There was certainly no... ...is that leads here with six laps to go. There is Petra Acosta in 13th place. Yeah, and the likes, I was just about to say, Steve, the likes of them. Simon. Uh, you mentioned uh, intent there. I can see Jaume Masia uh, costing him uh, uh, a fair bit of time. Yeah, absolutely. Although Jaume Masia had a bit of form with that himself at the end of last. Straight of Binder and Rodrigo rubbed. Wow, well, it's hard there. has got stuff, the stream as well, and he's moving up into third. Was and over the line. The top 20 men were covered by just 1.8 seconds. The so many of these riders as well hunting for their first ever Grand Prix podium. So.
October it is that leads the Moto3 Grand Prix. This is like a Tour de France peloton. <laughs> it really is. Oh, it's fantastic, though. It's losing out there with Gabriel Rodrigo. Yeah, Rodrigo and Pinder. They've had their... Further back there is Tatsuki Suzuki. We've not mentioned him too much in the last few laps. Nico Antonelli, number 20, the sprinter Honda rider, 17, Binder, 40... Sorry, 17, McPhee, 40, Binder. Jammer Massia making his way now to one here in Qatar. A long, long way to go. Four laps in the corner for him to try and retain that lead position. Because here comes Slipstream, and you can go from ninth to first into turn one. Toba leads. There goes McPhee. He now leads for the first. But McPhee's gone down again. Oh, John McPhee, how was your luck in 2021? And it's the two men. Oh, the heat at the moment, of course. The adrenaline still coursing through his veins. But I'm afraid to say one of our coolest customers in Moto3, John McPhee. Edwards, and there was nowhere for McPhee to go. Can you believe it? McPhee and Alcoba out again they were wiped out by our T-Gas type things are getting a bit messy here yeah, th this is a this is going to be now just a battle of survival Jama Masia Acosta is ahead of his teammate Jama, Ma Jama Masia that is wow. incredible he started from pit lane McPhee reflects on this and looks back on it in the cold light of day he'll have a lot of regrets about that of course he's absolutely fuming right not quite back tire but there's contact that you cannot blame and Alcoba for that but McPhee, but McPhee can McPhee see it coming it. Oh, nearly dear. totally totally understand in the heat of the moment his loss of cool but we, we know John McPhee so Jeremy Alcoba absolutely right now let's just try and focus on this somehow into turn one we go with three laps remaining Matt all the pin just thinking I need to get out of here I don't want all this trouble and chaos and carnage that's unfolding around him Winning a race. Issa Yamanaka having the ride of his life. He got his first world championship points last week. Number six, the Proustal rider. Action here in Qatar. And there's more drama still to come, isn't there? Two and a half laps to go. But Acosta from a pit lane start can still win this Doha Grand Prix. Oh, Asia, the winner here last Sunday, leads. Further back there is Raisa Yamanaka. Excellent stuff from him. He's just behind fellow Japanese dashboard. Second place, a brilliant ride so far from the experienced rider Andrea Migno. Yeah, I mean, whether Alcoba just got up, picked up that extra slipstream, it ran him into the first corner, perhaps five or six K. First two Grand Prix, already a massive hole in his championship charge. Two laps to go. Massia leads, podium places, although squeezing him out is Darren oh, Binder. Acosta's front tyre there just about hung in there. It was absolutely. There's a gap forming there behind Andrea Migno. Are the top five going to nudge themselves away? Antonelli is leading that exceptionally well, but I don't think time management can come into the equation in a race like this. And here goes Acosta. As he got up the inside of Binder, it was very bad. About these five in the closing stages of the penultimate lap of this Moto3 race here in Qatar. It has been... Three talent, and he's through on Binder. Through on Binder. Acosta up in the third place. Incredible. Win it, Matt. He could win it. A second I mean, now behind Migno to Antonelli. Is that oh, Joe Garcia. Garcia? His heroic charge from the pit lanes come to uh, grief and a premature ending. Rebel Katie Maiho had some heroics from the back. Eight. This would eclipse Binder's ride from the yeah. back of the pack. Yeah, from absolutely. the back of the grid in Jerez 2016. Pedro Acosta, he started. Nakio Antonelli is also there as well. Number 23 as they now head into turn one. It's Acosta who leads still. One in seconds off the lead group. And on the last lap, he leads. And he's got the hammer down. He's already trying to put a bit of daylight between himself hockey sensation not half can you believe what we're witnessing here in Qatar Pedro Acosta in just his second world Migno there that might be the end of Migno's podium challenge in doing so though Massia lost all of his exit speed and Rodrigo swept through and Stinder at the moment has got nothing for the incredible 16 year old Pedro Acosta Frustration! Oh, dearie me! A touch there between Sasaki and Masia. Masia right foot off the foot peg. Well, it looks like front. Never seen anything quite like this. I've been in the paddock for a quarter of a century, 25 long years. This has been a true three from the pit lane. Bender, though, he's brilliant on the front end of the final corner. It's going to be all about the slipstream. It's Acosta versus Bender. It's been Acosta's got it. He's got it. Unbelievable. Bender's got it. Wow. Pedro Acosta. What an unbelievable Grand Prix. We said he was a sensation last weekend on his debut. Truly remarkable Tiso Grand Prix of Doha. By three hundredths of a second, he started.